mesh that grows with your brain. This is what a neural lace is. Scientists have now created this mesh-like material that's made of different organic materials similar to the brain that we will be installing onto our brain lobes and then our brain will start to grow around this neural lace. What's so cool and great about it is that it can control the release of chemicals in the brain. So it can help a lot with those who are getting dementia or Alzheimer's or maybe those who are dealing with depression. So this would be like a natural alternative to an antidepressant. Instead of taking an antidepressant pill, you could be installing a neural lace into your brain and it can control the release of chemicals. What originally was science fiction now really is science. We are being able to use this on lab rats and possibly eventually humans also. Scientist Charles Lieber is the one behind this research. There was a paper that was released in Nature Nanotechnology where they explained what exactly the neural lace is like. It's like an ultra-fine mesh-like material that can merge into the brain and sort of become one with the brain. Now there's this device that's so thin and they describe it to be sort of like supple that can be injected using a needle. This is called mesh electronics. After injected, it has so many great uses like monitoring brain activity or giving treatment for those who have really bad degenerative diseases like Parkinson's disease. It's gone to be such a popularized subject that the U.S. military has taken an interest in using this for the U.S. Air Force. The U.S. Air Force has a cyber cell program, which mainly focuses on small-scale electronics performance enhancement. So the U.S. military is taking a huge interest in this. But in the future, the plan is for it to be wireless. And then there's Elon Musk, who's also working on this, and he describes it pretty much as a computer interface that's woven into the brain. One thing that really stood out to me that Elon Musk has been stating is that before we can advance in AI technology, as in artificial intelligence, we have to first practice the safety. And I think that this is why he's looking into doing a whole neural lace is because if we are becoming one with the machine, if we are injecting machine-like technology into our own bodies and our brains, we will then be able to understand how to control and how to come up with a backup plan in case stuff gets really bad with AI in the future. A day-to-day -day activity that is proposed by having a neural lace is something like trying to send a message to someone instead of typing it with your hands. All you gotta do is just think what you wanna say and it'll come out in a message and you can send that to someone or you can even just transmit it to them. Or even on top of that, you can just send the signal over to them of what you actually wanna say, whereas this is not going to be necessary. He also mentions what it's going to be like learning new things as opposed to doing constant trial and error or constant repetitive learning um, and memorization. You actually would just download information into your brain so that way you have learned things a lot faster. You can download seven different languages before traveling to other countries. It's going to be awesome. Now the injection process is really interesting because instead of doing it through directly into the brain, where brain surgery is very invasive, very risky, this actually he suggests would be injected through somewhere in the jugular and then move and find its way to the cortical neurons which would be located in the brain. Also one more little tidbit is that this is actually based on the culture novels, science fiction storyline that actually talks about having a human internet interface. So next week I'll go into something a little more physics based. Um, I'm going to touch on some of my old research. I did a video on protoplanetary disks a while back, but I want to actually go into the details of the actual uh, formula that I used um, to calculate the flux and the luminosity of uh, the newborn stars and what I was trying to do to find the distance between the newborn star and the possible accretion disk that was starting to form that could turn into a solar system. Uh, so I want to talk about my research and the details on that and it's just explain it to you guys and how I actually taught myself um, how to do it and then maybe I could teach you guys and maybe you guys will get it. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys have any suggestions of anything else you'd like me to do and check back next week and if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe below. Thank you so much. Talk next week. Bye guys.